back. This is video two of the Armitan CF258 build. In video one, we installed the motors to the arms and installed our ESCs. In this video, we're going to be assembling the frame, the power distribution board, and making the connections to the power distribution board. I just want to take a moment to identify the parts. We have the two center plates, the top plate. We have two different size screws that will be used to fasten the arms. Uh, eight nylock nuts and our battery strap. Now depending on what flight control you use will depend on the size screws that you have and the orientation of the screws. In this build I'm going to be using a KK2 board so I'm going to show you how the screws mount for the KK2 board. The KK2 board that I'm using is the standard size it's not the mini so it's going to be using the middle holes here to mount the KK board. These four holes that are in the center would be for the mullet afro. I'm going to be starting with the bottom left motor and I have oriented the A for our matten so that it faces me. I'm just going to place these two together the longer of the two screws that we have here is going to go to the outside of the arm and it's going to face down. The shorter of the two screws is going to go on the inside and it's going to face up. going to take a nut and stick it on there just to keep everything from falling apart. <clears throat> and I'm going to do this for the remaining arms. The longer of the two screws faces down. Shorter comes up from the bottom. Now, <clears throat> there is just a teeny tiny little bit of play in there. Um, so just make sure that when you fasten these screws down that your arms are as straight as possible. So I'm going to fasten mine down and we'll be right back. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Now we're ready to install our power distribution board. Power distribution board is just going to set on these four inner screws. Sometimes it can be a rather tight fit going down on top of these screws. So just make sure that everything is lined up really good. And when you push the power distribution board down, try and push it down evenly on all sides so that you're not bending the board. So we have our power distribution board pushed down. The next thing that we're going to do is take all of these wires that are actually on the bottom of the quad and we need to get those to the top. So we're going to push all those wires through these oval shaped openings in the frame. What you want to do is just take your wires. You can see that there's the positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, all the way around the board. We're just going to take the wires and what I do is I just kind of lay it up against the um, board there and I'm just going to cut it. I'm going to give myself, I don't want to stretch it tight, 
but also I don't I don't want a whole lot of slack there either so I'm just gonna cut it right at about the length that it needs to be and I'm gonna do that for each one of these connections Okay. Now we're going to tin each one of the soldering points before we um, go any further. And I'm also going to tin the solder pads for the power for the KK2 board. What I generally do is just put just a little bit on it first because we want to fill the hole. Now you can, if you want, actually place the wire inside of this hole on the distribution board. That's entirely up to you. I don't generally do that. one I'm just gonna go back and put just a little bit more on there because I want it to bubble up just a little bit if we put too much on at once it just goes right through it doesn't actually bubble up should be ready to tin the wires. All I'm going to do is just take about an eighth of an inch off of each one of the wires. in each one of these wires.
I like to keep things clean, so I'm just going to take a little bit of alcohol and clean up where we just where we just tend those pads. Give that a give that a minute to dry. We're just going to solder our connections right down. Okay, we're ready to solder them up. Just like that. Tangled my solder up here. I got a mess. It's important not to move the wire. If you move the wire while you're placing it and the solder is cooling, you'll get what's called a cold solder joint. And you don't want that. of them look good except for this one. I kind of squished the wire on that one. There we go, all our power connections connected. And again, I'm just gonna take this uh, alcohol, just clean the rosin. If you've got any little bitty solder balls on there, you wanna make sure they're gone because you don't want them floating around. Now, since I'm using a KK2, I have the input, 12 volt input to the board, which is on the left-hand side of the board here. But rather than use the two pads on the left-hand side to get our power from, I'm actually going to be using the two pads on the right-hand side, soldering them over here, running the wire under the board, and then connecting it. It's just going to make for a neater build. I have 10 to the end of these wires. Now we just need to connect them up. Now we're ready to route our motor wires to whichever side they need to be for your particular build. In our case, with the KK2 board, the motor connections are on the right-hand side, so I'm gonna be routing all the wires over here to the right-hand side. Now I have all of the motor wires routed underneath of the power distribution board and coming out here on the right hand side so that they will mount up nicely with the KK2 board. Now 
you might be saying, well, that would be a whole lot easier to do before you mount the uh, power distribution board. But there's a very good reason why you don't want to do that. When you are heating up these connections for the power distribution board, if you already have these motor wires underneath of there, chances are you're going to burn through the insulation and possibly cause a short. I prefer to route these wires after the all the soldering is done on the distribution board. Also, you want to label each one of your motors, one, two, three, and four, and label the ends of these motor wires so that we know where they mount to the KK2 board. In the next video, that's actually what we're going to be doing. We're going to be installing the KK2 board, powering it up, and going over some of the settings that are involved for the CF258. So, see you then. Well, folks, guess what I did? And you didn't even tell me I was doing it. I forgot to install the XT60 battery connection, but it's okay. I've already checked, and I have plenty of room underneath the distribution board that I won't be affecting my motor signal wires. When you solder your wires to your distribution board, um, go ahead and cut the length. Don't leave these that long. They don't need to be. Most batteries, see if I have one here, this is a rather large battery, but most batteries have got a long power wire on them already. So your power wire on your quad really only needs to be about an inch and a half, two inches long. So I'm going to solder that up and I'll be right back. Look on our XT60 connector. The flat side is the positive. The wedged shape is the negative. I have soldered the wires that Chris has provided to the XT60 connector. He has also provided us with the heat shrink tubing. I'm just going to slide that down over. Don't want to need any shorts going on. So I'm just going to shrink these up and I'll be right back. I have trimmed both wires down to about an inch and a half long. And I'm just going to solder these right to the distribution board. Now we have our XT60 hooked up with a good solid power connection.